chapter is entitled Prahlad, the saintly son of Hiranyakashipu. I chose a verse that deals with the processes of devotional service. And this is text 23 and 24. And Prahlad Maharaj speaks. Shri Parada Uvacha. Shri Uvacha. Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnaho. Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnaho. Sevanam, Sevanam, Vandanam Dasyam, Sakyam Atman Nivedanam, Sakyam Atman Nivedanam, Iti Pumsarpitam Vishnu, Iti Pumsarpitam Vishnu, Bhaktis Chen Navalakshana, Bhaktis Chen Navalakshana, Kriyate Bhagavata Yadha, Sri Parada Uvacha, Sri Parada Uvacha, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, Smarnam Pada Sevanam, Smarnam Pada Sevanam, Archanam Vandanam Dasyam, Archanam Vandanam Dasyam, Sakyam Atman Nivedanam, Sakyam Atman Nivedanam, Iti Pumsarpita Vishnu, Bhaktis Chenna Valakshana, Bhaktis Chenna Valakshana, Kriyata Bhagavata Yadha, Kriyata Bhagavata Yadha, Tanmanye Dititam Muttamam, Tanmanye Dititam Muttamam, Chant. Shavanam Kirtanam Vishnu, Shavanam Kirtanam Vishnu, 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 Vishn
this is sufficient. The other eight processes are included. And now let us discuss these nine different processes. And Prabhupada begins with hearing. Hearing, hearing of the holy name of the Lord, is the beginning of devotional service. Although any of the nine processes is sufficient, in chronological order, the hearing of the holy name of the Lord is the beginning. Indeed, it is essential, as enunciated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitam Dharma Marjana. By chanting the holy name of the Lord, one is cleansed of all material conceptions of life, which are due to the dirty modes of material nature. When the dirt is cleansed from the core of the heart, one can realize the form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchit Ananda Vigraha. Thus, by hearing the holy name of the Lord, one comes to the platform of understanding the personal form of the Lord. Kirtana. The hearing of the holy name has been described above. Now let us try to understand the chanting of the holy name, which is the second item in the consecutive order. It is recommended that such chanting be performed very loudly. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Narada Muni says that without shame, he began traveling all over the world, chanting the holy name of the Lord. Similarly, Lord Chaitanya has advised, Trinada Pitsuni Chena Tayora Pitsuhishnana Amariya Nandena Kirtaniya Sadai. A devotee can very peacefully chant the holy name of the Lord by behaving more humbly than the grass, being tolerant like a tree, and offering respects to everyone without expecting honor for, from anyone else. Such qualifications make it easy to chant the holy name of the Lord. I'm sorry, make it easier to chant the holy name of the Lord. The process of transcendental chanting can be easily performed by anyone. Even if one is physically unfit, classified lower than others, devoid of material qualifications, and not at all elevated in terms of pious activities, chanting of the holy name is beneficial. <coughs> An aristocratic birth, an advanced education, beautiful bodily features, wealth, and similar results of pious activities are all unnecessary for advancement in spiritual life. For one can very easily advance simply by chanting the holy name. It is understood from the authority of source of Vedic literature, but especially in this age, Kali Yuga, people are generally short living, extremely bad in their habits, and inclined to accept methods of devotional service that are not bona fide. However, they are always disturbed by material conditions, and they are mostly unfortunate. Under the circumstances, the performance of other processes such as yajna, dana, tapa, and kriya, sacrifice, charity, and so on, are not at all possible. Therefore, it is recommended, Hare Nama, 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 Hare In this age of quarrel and hypocrisy, that's the age we live in, the only means of deliverance is the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. There is no other way, there is no other way, there is no other way. Simply by chanting the holy name of the Lord, one advances perfectly in the spiritual life. This is the best process for success in life. In other ages, the chanting of the holy name is equally powerful, but especially in this age, Kali Yuga, it is most powerful. Kirtana eva Krishnasya mukta sangha param vajet. Simply by chanting the holy name of Krishna, one is liberated and returns home back to Radha. Therefore, even if one is able to perform other processes of devotional service, one must adopt the chanting of the Holy Name as the principal method of advancing in spiritual life. So Prabhupada previously says any of the eight, nine processes are sufficient. So you can do any one. But now here, in the same purport, he says, there, but one must adopt the chanting of the Holy Name as the principal method of advancing in spiritual life. So there has to be, and the Holy Name has to be there as the feature, and, and one can adopt any of the other eight processes. And so, although, 
people take that statement that Prabhupada mentioned earlier and say that this is nice, I can just do deity worship, I don't have to chant. I can just, you know, uh, <clears throat> you know, do what we call, uh, what else, offer prayers, I don't have to chant. But then it's clarified here, and it's also mentioned in the Chaitanya Bhagavad, and that in this age, one must chant the holy names of the Lord as the means for self-realization. Whether the name is any names, any name of God is sufficient, but the name of Krishna is supreme, and what we say completely, the complete name of Krishna. All the other names of the Lord are on different levels of spiritual potency. There are two types of names. There are the secondary names, and there are the primary names. That's mentioned in the Shastras, one must chant the primary names of the Lord. That is, those names that describe his name, fame, forms, and qualities. Not those names that indicate his um, activities as the creator, maintainer, destroyer, or all-pervading existing, such as Ishwara, or God, or Brahman, or Param Brahman. In other words, his functionary names are not considered to be names that are chanted, but his names that are describing his qualities like Govinda, Gopal, and Yasumati Nandana, these are primary names. But in this age, although there are so many primary names for the Lord, it's mentioned by the, the Acharyas that we follow the path given by Lord Chaitanya. So in this age, Lord Chaitanya taught us to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Yadnai Sankirtanai Prayai Yajanti Hisamedasa. Those who are very sharp and intelligent should adopt this process of chanting the holy names of the Lord. Nice point. One who has good intelligence will adopt the process. <clears throat> the word is sumedasa. Medasa means intelligence, and su means good. And there's another word called alpha. Alpha means small or meager. And it's probably used filled up with cow dog. <laughs> the brain is filled up with cow dung, <coughs> then it's considered to be alpha medusa. That means one has, doesn't have any understanding what is, what is valuable in life. What is valuable in life. So one who has good intelligence, who medusa, the Prabhupada says very sharp, <coughs> excuse me, and then they will adopt this chanting. One should not, however, manufacture different types of chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Ram, Govinda, Hare, Ram Sham, Sham Ram. <laughs> you know, there is, what is that? Hare, what is it? Hare Krishna, Sri Krishna, Nityananda, Hare Krishna, Ram Sham, Hare Sham, Hare Sham, Hare Krishna, Hare Ram, something like that. Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Nitai Gaur, Radha Sham. Nitai Gaur, Radha Sham, yeah. Radharaman Babaji he was a big, powerful chariot in that age. And he was chanting that and he had a large following who were chanting that also. <coughs> Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati challenged him personally. That's when it was in the early years before he became famous as an acharya. That was in the year 1905, <coughs> just after he had took initiation from Gorky Shorta's Babaji. But, you know, there became a big problem and Bhakti, Bhakti Vinod Dakar told him, don't challenge him anymore, you know, he's just making a lot of trouble. There was a lot of backlash. But actually, Prabhupada speaks about this, that this is not authorized chanting by taking various names of the Lord from different mantras. Mantra has to be authorized by Shastra. Shastra is the basis for understanding truth and understanding the process of achieving the truth. 
and Shastra, one has to follow the, the Shastras, but one has to get the Shastras from the Acharyas. And the Acharya has to come in the line of other Acharyas that are coming connected to Krishna. So there's a process. One may claim to be an Acharya, may, one may speak on the Shastras, but if they don't have all the other qualifications, what they say has no, what we say, spiritual, what we say, potency. So the potency comes when you connect. You can have a lot of wires hanging down, but that wire that's connected to the, to the electrical source will give you the power you need. Other wires look like they can do something, but if they're not connected, they may look like just like the original wire. But without having the connection, it won't give you any power at all. Same with the holy name. There are so many ways to chant different names of God, which also include the Hare Krishna chant in it, or what we say, the, Hare, the names Hare Krishna and Hare Ram. <clears throat> but if they're not authorized, one should not, one should not, one, Press Prabhupada says, one should seriously adhere to the chanting as recommended in the scriptures. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And Prabhupada goes on to describe, one should be careful to avoid ten offenses. From Sadat Kumara, there's a thing called Sadat Kumara Samhita. It is understood that even if a person is a severe offender in many ways, he can be freed from the offense of life if he takes shelter of the holy name. Indeed, even if a human being is no better than a two-legged animal, he will be liberated if he takes shelter of the holy name. One should therefore be very careful not to commit offenses at the lotus feet of the Lord's holy name. So, therefore, the chanting is very powerful, but in the beginning stage, we chant with offense. We're not fully, what we say, following these ten, or what we say, ten plus one, the regulative principles for avoiding offenses. And here, Prabhupada mentions that. He says, one, to blaspheme of a devotee, especially a devotee engaged in broadcasting the glories of the holy name. So this is called <clears throat> Hasti Aparad. Hasti means elephant. And if you have a nice garden and you put some flowers and you cultivate the soil and you make sure the weeds are not there, but then you let an elephant into your garden. Finished. No garden. So, therefore, as one is carefully cultivating the process of devotional service by chanting the holy name, one must strictly avoid criticizing Vaishnavas. And it says here, especially those who have dedicated their lives to preaching the glories of the Lord. The Lord doesn't tolerate such uh, blaspheme or criticism of his devotees. One should avoid criticizing any devotee, even what we say, a new devotee. One should avoid that mentality altogether. One should show compassion to others and not find fault with others if there is some discrepancy. One should be, try to elevate one. One should be more like a friend rather than one who is finding fault. It's easy to find fault. It's natural to find fault in Kali Yuga, because in this age, there are a lot of faults, and people do have faults. Especially when we come to people who have not been trained from birth to execute the process of devotional service, or even to live properly. Know some scars, know what we say, proper behavior, no, anything. People are just growing up like animals. I was just recently coming from London. This was last month on an airplane. And there was about 50 children from the ages of about 5 to about 15. It was a large group. And they were really wild. 
very misbehaved, very, what we say, even, you know, even nasty, acting just like animals on the plane and doing all kinds of crazy things to other people, including me. <laughs> I had to tolerate it. But, you know, this is what's happening in Kali Yuga, that this in this age, people have children without any, and then they just let them grow up to whatever way they grow up. <laughs> and so they're off, they're off to a bad start because they don't follow the Vana, the Garpadan Sanskar. So you have Vana Sankar children. And no one is training them, no one's teaching them. And they don't want to be taught, they simply want to enjoy their senses. So, in this age, people have so many faults. It's an ocean of faults, as we hear from that verse, Kalir Dosha Nidhi Raja, unlimited faults in this age. So even when a person comes to devotional service, even if a person is in devotional service still, they still may have some defects or some faults. But one should, one should not be like, there are two types of animals or insects. One is a bee and one is a fly. The fly always tries to find the sores and the dirty places. It's the nature of the fly. And the bee always goes for the nice flowers that are very fragrant, sweet, very nice to look at. And he takes the honey from that. So Prabhupada says, be a bee. <laughs> be like a bee. Always try to see the good in others and overlook the faults. Even if you see faults, you shouldn't try to talk about them, keep them, push them out of your mind. It's not important. So one who dwells on faults of others will start to speak about it, and then that could be detrimental to one's devotion, will be detrimental. So that's the first offense. To consider the name of Lord Shiva or any demigods to be equal or powerful as the name of Lord Vishnu or to be superior to him. So Brahma, Shiva, powerful controllers, but they get their power from the Supreme Personality of God in Vishnu or Krishna. So in places you'll see, in different places in India, people worship all the devas equally, and Krishna is one of them. They have their altars with many, many devas on, sometimes even include their grandfather on the altar. <laughs> now people worship the ancestors, but it's going a little bit too far. So, um, that whole thing of just worshiping anything, yatabhat, tatabhat, the idea is worship is, is the principle. It doesn't matter who you worship, as long as you worship. But if you worship, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, if you were, one who worships the devas, go to the devas. One who worships ghosts and spirits, goes to them. One who worships the fathers, will take forefathers, will take birth amongst the forefathers, and one who worships me will come to me. Yanti deva pata deva patrin yanti patrin rita putani putajim yanti mam yanti mam nad yanti no pimam. Thank you. Um, so that is the verse from the ninth chapter, which is one of the most important chapters in the Bhagavad Gita, in which Krishna describes the process of destination. So one has to worship the Supreme Personality, one has to know. So in the Srimad Bhagavata, um, there is a listing of all the incarnations and manifestations of the Supreme. And then after all of that is done, with nice descriptions, about their mission and everything. It says, Ete Cham Sam Kalom Pum Sam Krishna's two Bhagavans, Mayam. That Krishna, all these incarnations or plenary portions or portions of the plenary portion, but Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. So people sometimes worship everything, <laughs> but one should worship. In our process, we are worshiping Krishna. Krishna manifests himself as Ram. Or Nishringadev, and of course Lord Chaitanya, see Krishna Chaitanya, Radha, Krishna, Noyanya. He is Radharani and Krishna in one. So that is also worship of Krishna, to worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
but one should worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead and nothing less. And not consider powerful devas such as Shiva and Brahma. Shiva is very powerful. <clears throat> Shiva is very powerful. Sometimes he's considered the father of all living entities because he's the second super soul. <clears throat> but still, people worship Shiva, Brahma, Ganesh, and others. Why? But they generally worship for what? The material gain, yes. And material gain comes automatically by one's karma. One doesn't have to worship that. You'll get whatever you deserve. <laughs> no need for worship. So, that is the second offense. Be careful. Third is to disobey or to minimize the instructions of the spiritual master or to consider the spiritual master to be an ordinary person. Four is to blaspheme Vedic literatures or literatures in the pursuance of the Vedic versions. One should um, see that there are many types of literatures and not all of them teach pure bhakti. Some teach karma, jnana, and other principles, but bhakti is also mentioned in some of these literatures. So there's a very nice purport in the fourth canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. The Prabhupada says one should not find fault or criticize other religious scriptures. Although they may not deal with pure devotional service, still they should be respected because there are different kinds of people who are at different levels of practice and these scriptures are meant for them. And this process of, of pure devotional service is the highest of all spiritual processes. Many times devotees in Krishna consciousness are not performing bhakti. We're performing something else. We haven't reached the stage of bhakti yet. What is, what is the stage of bhakti? That one desires no results, no gain for whatever one does. <clears throat> as long as there's desire for fruit of results, we are still under the influence of karma. <clears throat> That's karma mission bhakti. And if we're still trying to be, what we say, free from material miseries or become liberated, that is jnana vishya bhakti. That's a mixture. Pure bhakti is when one serves Krishna for the pleasure of Krishna. That's, that's the essence of bhakti. Any personal motivation or gain mixes the pure bhakti in. So Prabhupada's given us the process. But he knows that many of us haven't reached this stage yet. So gradually, and how do we reach that stage? By purifying the heart through the chanting of the holy names. And this is the process. <clears throat> and then we can come to the stage of associating with Krishna through the chanting of the holy name and actually wanting to please Krishna as, as our only goal in life. Because wanting to please Krishna means that is the perfection of one's existence. When Krishna is pleased, everyone benefits, especially the person who performs the activity that is pleasing to Krishna. So that's the essence of devotional service. And when we chant the holy names of the Lord, this pleases the Lord very much. So one should chant the holy names of the Lord as the foremost of all processes of devotional service. Okay, so I'm going through these nine, ten offenses, and then at the end you can ask any questions if you like. Number five is to, to comment that the glories of the holy name of the Lord are exaggerated. It says that when you chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, you can be freed from all material desires, you can realize Krishna, you can come to the highest stage of pure devotional service, realizing Krishna's pastimes and Sri Vrindavan Dham. Some commentators and others, Jai Sri Sri Pratha Kunjavi Hari Ji Ki Jai Sri Sri Gornitai Ki Jai. Some commentators say that all these statements in the Vedas are simply exaggerations, simply to get you to chant the Holy Names. They use the word uh, hyperbole. Hyperbole means something that is way beyond what it actually means. 
it's more like an exaggeration or an unnecessary eulogy of something. But actually, the statements in the Vedas are what we say understatements, not overstatements. <laughs> the glories of the Lord, His holy name, cannot be enunciated in words by anyone because Krishna's name is Krishna. Krishna's name is Krishna. There's no difference. Therefore, one should not think that these statements in the scriptures are exaggerations. One may start to think like that because after many years of chanting, one may not experience what the scriptures are saying. But that is not the fall of the name, nor does it make the name any less. It's simply, we have to simply purify our consciousness to experience the qualities or the power of Krishna's holy name. In fact, to interpret the holy name in a deviant way, or to compare it with something in the material world. The chanting of the holy name is like going to a nice party. <laughs> or when, you can compare it to anything. Uh, there was one personality who was around during the time of Prabhupada. He was the hero of the younger generation at the time in the 1960s and the 1970s, his name was Allen Ginsberg. And he met Prabhupada, he was one of the first persons to meet Prabhupada. And Prabhupada was there. And he was chanting the Hare Krishna mantra because he had gone to India and learned the mantra. But he was chanting so many other songs. But he was thinking, and he also said that all the chantings are nice and they're all the same. He was chanting songs and other things also. And he would blend the chanting of the Hare Krishna. But Prabhupada you know, made clear that you know all these other things are not equal to or even greater than the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. So one should not interpret it. The chanting of the holy name is like and whatever you put after it, you can put anything like that. A nice bath in the ocean or something. <laughs> but whatever you do, it's always offensive because the holy name is Krishna so it cannot be interpreted. The next one, Namna He Maham Namna Papa Bodhi. Is now the next one is to commit sinful activities on the strength of the chanting of the holy name. What is that? Well, now I have the formula. <clears throat> I can do some illicit sex, I can do some intoxication, I can do some something else, and I can chant Hare Krishna. And then the reactions of my activities will be destroyed, nullified. And that is cheating, and one cannot cheat Krishna. And therefore those Krishna's name is very merciful. Krishna can withdraw his mercy. And even though one is chanting, one will not get the benefit of the chanting. In 1975, a very charismatic personality, along with at least 50 of his disciples, joined the Hare Krishna movement. His name was Siddha Sarup. <clears throat> He's still around. He preaches somewhere in the South Pacific, I think. Large following, they all came, they all, many of them got initiated. But he was very charismatic and he still had that mood of being a guru, even though Prabhupada was around. <laughs> so, um, after a while, he, he broke away from Prabhupada and many of his followers came with him. Some stayed with Prabhupada and some came with him. And uh, he was chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantri, but he was smoking marijuana. <laughs> and so, you know, that was their program. <laughs> he never gave up chanting, but he added a little you know, flavor to it. <laughs> and in that flavor, you know, so the devotees who were still with Prabhupada would say, were saying, well, Prabhupada, he's chanting Hare Krishna. Prabhupada said his chanting is useless. It's offensive. It has no benefit at all. In fact, it's, it's actually taking them away. Because, you know, 
he's breaking that principle of disobeying the instructions of the Shastras, that there are certain restrictions one must follow, and therefore he's not getting the benefit of the Holy Name. So, be careful. If one accidentally commits a sinful activity, that is excusable, and one can chant the Holy Name and become free from the reaction. But with intention, if one is thinking intentionally, I'll do this, and then because of that, I can chant, and then my reactions will be mitigated, and everything will be okay. No. So that, that cannot be done. To compare the chanting of the Holy Name to pious activities, well, you do your puja, he does his rata, he does his mantra, I do mine, it's all the same. This you find also from many people from India. They have their methods of worship and they think, well, you have yours, we have ours, that's nice. So if one considers these other activities to be equal to or greater than the chanting of the Holy Name, then one, it's, it's another type of offense, it's called karma kanda. To instruct the glories of the Holy Name to persons who have no understanding of the chanting of the Holy Name, so this is an interesting one. You know, one should, when one preaches or one speaks about the Holy Name, one should keep it very simple for new people and not try to get into the glories, the higher glories of the Holy Name. Sometimes in classes we may also speak like that and there are new people here. And sometimes we somehow transgress this particular restriction a little bit. But in general we should try to avoid it. And that is that one should just speak very simply, basically. Because if someone starts to take issue with what you say, then they become offensive, and then also, they may also be unable to chant the Holy Name because of your bad preaching. <laughs> because therefore we should be very sensitive how to instruct people in chanting the Holy Name. The last one, number 10, not to awaken transcendental attachments for the, for the chanting of the Holy Name, even after hearing so many instructions from the Guru, from the scriptures, still one is attached to the materialistic life. I think devotees may also fall into that. They stay on the bodily platform, they chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, but they're still desiring sense gratification. And therefore, it becomes difficult to continue to chant the holy names of the Lord. This is called the offense of I am mine, or the idea that I am this body, and the things in relationship to this body are also mine. And one continues in that mentality, and therefore the holy name restricts its mercy. So one has to grow in the process of devotional service and give up sense gratification. It's a gradual process, but one should always be moving in the right direction or forward, gradually attaching. Sometimes we find a devotee will be very much attached to a particular type of sense gratification and will not give it up. They'll even, they'll even pray to the Lord, please don't take this away from me. <laughs> I need it like that. But, and then, therefore, one's progress will, will be very slow and practically nil. The process of chanting the Holy Name uproots all the sinful activities and material desires in the heart. And gradually, one is meant to come to the platform of pure consciousness. And so, one should not try to hold on or to somehow or other, year after year, stay in the same place they are. We have to make advancement. If you don't know how to make advancement, what do you do? You associate with senior devotees and you get that association and inspiration. And that's the most powerful way to make advancement. Yeah. We can follow the process, but we may not be able to get the mercy of the process unless we really come in association with elevated and senior devotees. It's very important. So, okay, and Prabhupada said there is no other way to atone for any of these offenses. It is therefore that 
recommend that the defender at the feet of the holy name continue to chant the holy name of the Lord 24 hours a day. So how do you get rid of the offenses? Chant the holy names. The holy name can relieve defenses to the holy name. The holy name can relieve defenses to the deity. The holy name can re relieve defenses to the Dham. But the holy name cannot relieve the offenses to Vaishnavas. So the holy name can relieve all kinds of offenses except Vaishnava Parana. That requires extra activity and endeavor. So I'm going to chant the holy names of the Lord. And the last offense, or sometimes we say the eleventh offense, is to chant inattentively. Now Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur mentions that inattentive chanting leads to all other offenses. He says, if you want to be free from the tendency to commit other offenses, chant attentively. So he recommends that if you want to make progress in devotional service, this is what you should work on, attentive chanting. Even kirtan, and particularly in japa, learn how to hear nicely. And this will be the workshop that will try to say something and how to prove the quality of our chanting. Um, there's, there's, not, there's never too much to be said about you know, the quality of our chanting, how to improve it. We can all improve our chanting. There's different aspects of how to improve from all angles, but one should work on attentive chanting. And there's three ways to be inattentive. One, to think of other things while you're chanting. Two, to have no enthusiasm for chanting. And three, to be chanting in a very sleepy consciousness. These are the three things. They're called Aldakshina, uh, Vikshepa, and Jadya. Three things. So the Acharyas mention how to get over inattentive chanting. When inattentive chanting becomes long-term and persons are chanting inattentively for years, it becomes like impossible to break that unless they get some real strong help. Because inattentive chanting will somehow or other etch itself in the mind and one cannot get away from that mood. It takes a lot. So when you start seeing yourself becoming inattentive immediately, don't allow it to go on. Don't become lazy when it comes to trying to increase, increase the quality of your attention. <clears throat> I know one devotee, he's in Mayapur, he teaches text needs how to break an attentive chanting. And he's told me that some devotees have been chanting inattentively for 10, 12, 15 years. And so it's, it's so hard to break that. And it's like you've seen these records, you know, these. That's before we had CDs and MP3s, we had cassettes, and before cassettes we had you know, put the needle on the record. Maybe that was before your time. Us, us old fogies, we know all about that. And anyway, but sometimes when, you, when the needle gets stuck in the groove, it doesn't move, and the same thing is going over, <laughs> like that. You know. And you just kind of like push the needle and you scratch the whole record. <laughs> so that's that stuck in the groove is like stuck in an attentive chanting. So sometimes it takes you know some very severe types of work in order to break that inattention, <clears throat> but it can be done. So therefore, be careful. Always observe yourself when you chant, how attentive you're chanting, and apply the principles to try to hear nicely. And attentive chanting is the key to the spiritual progress. It gives us clarity of thought. It gives us intelligence how to deal with situations. And most of all, it frees us from the reactions of offenses. Okay, Prabhupada goes on more and more and speaks a little bit here about <coughs> the holy name. But 
Well, he says here, this is interesting, <coughs> one should be very humble and meek to offer one's desires and chant prayers composed in glorification of the Holy Name. So he says this is a way to, to um, increase to one quality is that such prayers as ayi mukta kular upasyanam nivrittatasya upagiyamanam two prayers. One is from the Bhagavatam, the other one is the first verse in the uh, Rupa Goswami's what is it? Namrita. The prayers and the eight prayers of glorification of the Lord by Srila Rupa Goswami. One should chant such prayers to become free from the offenses at the lotus feet of the holy names. So these two prayers. I remember Sachi Nandana Maharaj writes that in that book, Ocean, Oceanal Ocean, of the Nectar of the Oceanal Ocean. In the, yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> so many different ways. I made up my own mantra. <laughs> but the point is, that in that book he mentions these two prayers as ways to accompany the chanting of the Holy Name. Chant them before, like for instance, every morning we chant the six Shastika prayers. That is very, uh, what we say, it gives great potency to our chanting. If we carefully chant the six Shastika prayers in the morning prior to chanting the Holy Name, it will help us chant the Holy Name nicer. Because the Shikshasa compares are none other than the Holy Name in another form. And we can chant other prayers, prayers from the Shastras, prayers by the, from the great Acharyas, just to remind us of the power, potency, and importance of chanting Krishna's name. So. Okay, so we're getting on in time here. We want to keep the schedule. Any questions? Yes, this for a poor girl. So uh, we can see, Maharaj, that uh, it happens that we can be very respect, respectful towards the devotees who we de deal with occasionally or something like this. We, we are not with them on a regular basis. It's connected to this perfect yeah, aspect. People we're always with, it's we lose a little, like our wife. Yeah. Your... But then, uh, when we, if we are like with, with our wife, or with our child, or with a husband, mm -hmm. or temple for the watch for in the temple with their close uh, friends in the temple, they can uh, uh, see, uh, we can see that they are uh, in Maya, or they do not understand things, or they are a lower, lower level than we are, and so on. And then we, we commit offenses towards them and uh, maybe say some words which are not nice and so on. So how to uh, increase uh, our uh, consciousness so that we can uh, correctly also deal to the people who are very close to us? It doesn't matter if it is in a family or in the temple. How to, how to deal with Vaishnavas properly? Who are close to us, like child, spouse or Temple, you next well, you have to understand, you're not this body, <clears throat> and they are not their bodies either. <laughs> Who are they? They're Krishna's part and parcel. As you serve others, it's a reflection of your relationship to the Lord. And so in relationship to how we want to deal with the Lord, we deal with others in, this, in the proper way. So as our children, we have to take care of the children. So there's a way to do that. As our wife, we relate to them according to religious principles. So we follow these things. But our consciousness should be that I must, I'm a servant. That's the most important thing. If we consider ourselves a master in whatever position we have, we will see others as our servant. Either for our instructions or for our, you know, getting something from them. The devotee is trying to give, not trying to get. I know like there's an expectation in family life where the wife has to do her part and the husband has to do his part. The child also plays a part in some way. And if one is not playing the part, the other part, the other person might feel a little bit, you know, slighted. 
but that can be worked out in the proper way and without becoming offensive or without becoming, what we say, insensitive to other people's feelings and needs. If we become insensitive to other people. The quality of a devotee is that they can, they understand or they try to understand the needs of others, the feelings of others, and not so much that everybody has to understand me. <laughs> Nobody understands me. <laughs> Oh, it's horrible. Krishna, please, don't you know how great I am? How come they don't know it? <laughs> so, you know, we're always trying to put ourselves in the center. And that's, that's the nature of the, the false ego. It wants to be in the center. What to do? So, become a servant or learn how to serve according to the situation. That's all. That's all. We want to serve others. We're not interested in being served or getting service. We may accept service in order to, so we can do service, but that's the reason why we accept service, so we can get something back. It's not like we need to be served. <clears throat> so, if you're in the if you're in that mood of service, then you'll see what can I do for that person rather than what can they do for me. That should be the mood. And even if there's some discrepancy, by by acting in that way, you somehow or other overshadow the discrepancy. Persons change when we become, when we act properly. If you respect someone, even if they're not respectable in the sense of the way they're acting or anything, still they may, they also may feel, oh, this person is nice. So they, they, they act nice also, or they change. They say if you want to change others, change yourself and watch how other people change. <laughs> and it's a fact. Mm -hmm. At least up to a, a large degree, that's true. 